Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x squared minus 2x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values, real and non-real. So we're going to be looking at all the solutions, and you probably already guessed there are some obvious solutions. We're going to take a look at them as well. So, in order to solve this for all numbers, including real and complex, we're going to write 1 as a complex number, or should I say in polar form or using Euler's formula. So let's go ahead and do the following. 1 can be written as 1 plus 0i, and on the coordinate system, this is the imaginary, this is the real axis, notice that the imaginary part is 0, and the real part is 1, which means our number is actually going to appear on the x-axis, one unit from 0. Okay, So that's our number z, which we are trying to write in polar form. So we need r and theta to be able to write something in polar form. So if you have those, then you can write it as z equals r times e to the power i theta. Notice that r is equal to 1 in this case because its distance from 0 is 1 and theta is going to be 0 degrees. But obviously you don't want to write it with 0 degrees, so you don't want to write it as 1 times e to the power i times 0 because that would just be 1 times e to the power 0, which is 1. It's not really going to help you much. So instead we're going to think about that angle as 0 plus 2 and pi. In other words, we're going to add multiples of 2 pi because every 2 pi is going to give you a full rotation and that'll bring you to the same point. Okay? So the principal value and then the general value. All right, cool. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write the z as e to the power i times 2 and pi. Okay? Cool. Now, this is 1, by the way. So that's going to be our number on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and write our equation again. 3 to the power x squared minus 2x equals 1, which is e to the power i times 2 and pi. Okay. Cool. Now, what are we going to do next? Log both sides. But use natural log so you can get rid of the e on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and ln the left hand side and ln the right hand side. And if you want, you can also write this exponent as 2n pi i. So i can go at the end. All right? Now, using properties of logs, we're going to bring these down. And that's going to give us x squared minus 2x multiplied by ln 3 equals 2n pi i times ln e, but ln e is equal to 1, so we don't have to worry about it. So far, so good. Are you following? Okay, now, here's what we're going to do next. We're trying to solve for x, correct? So let's isolate all the x terms, and let's do that by dividing both sides by ln 3. Okay? Divide by ln 3, and you're going to get the following. So far, so good. But we have x squared minus 2x. Hmm. That's not linear. It is quadratic. How do you solve a quadratic equation? There are three main different methods. One of them is the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and erase them here. Quadratic formula. We have completing the square and factoring. But guess what? Factoring is not always available, especially in a case like this with the i and the pi and the, all that stuff. It's not going to be possible. So we either have to use this or that. And guess what? I'm going to go with the second because completing the square here is so easy. All you have to do is add 1 to both sides, and I'll tell you why. When you add 1 to both sides, the left-hand side is basically going to be a perfect square. Make sense? Yes. It is going to be x minus 1 squared. So let's go ahead and write it that way. 
And on the right hand side, what I can do is make a common denominator. To make a common denominator, I need to write one as ln3 over ln3, and then just add the numerators. This is going to be our numerator, so we're going to get ln3 plus 2n pi i over ln3. Notice that I wrote the one first. It doesn't matter because we can switch these around. Make sense? So far, so good. All right. Next step after completing the square would be to unsquare or square root. If you square root both sides, notice that you're going to end up with two values because there are two numbers whose square equals a certain number. This is not about complex numbers. Even if you had a real value like this, suppose you had something equal to 16, then you would still do plus minus. Why? Because even though 16 has a single square root in the world of real numbers, there are two numbers whose square equals 16. Those numbers are 4 and negative 4. This is just to give you an example. Obviously, that's not the answer. Let's go back to our example and square root both sides using a plus minus sign. So x minus 1 is going to equal plus minus the square root of ln 3 plus 2n pi i divided by ln 3. All right? Cool, cool. The next step would be to isolate x. So let's add 1 to both sides. If you add 1, you're going to get x. And if you add 1, you're going to get 1 plus minus the square root of ln 3 plus 2n pi i divided by ln 3. Awesome. Do you like the solution? <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, we're going to look at some special cases in a little bit, but before that, I wanted to tell you something. Can we simplify this? And the answer is yes. Is it going to be easy? Not at all. It's going to be super duper complicated. Why? Because you have to take the square root of this number. In other words, like you're kind of square rooting a plus bi. And as you know, this is not fairly straightforward, especially with parts like this. Real part and imaginary part. Real part is okay. It's one. But if you think about the imaginary part of this number, it's this one. So that's going to be kind of tough. But definitely you can do it. All right, cool. So here's what we're going to do, though. We're going to be looking at some special cases. What happens, for example, if n is equal to 0, right? If n is 0, then you get x equals 1 plus minus the square root of ln3 over ln3, which is 1. And then from here, we get two solutions, 1 plus 1 and 1 minus 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, and guess what? Those are going to be the only real solutions, because if you set this equal to 0 directly, that's what you would be getting. Make sense? Okay, we could have found the results like this, but guess what? This is more fun, because it gives you all the solutions. Make sense? Okay. Now, are there solutions for all values of n? That's another good question to ask, and I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the reader. Don't you hate that expression when you see it in a textbook? Okay. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.